Hi, it is Discover Social Sciences, uh, the scientific blog. I am Krzysztof Waśniewski. You can go to the site discoversocialsciences.com uh, to see the full contents of the blog. An explanation in the beginning, as usual, in those videos. Uh, under the video in the description box, uh, you can see the, the full address, the full link to go to my blog. When you click on that link, uh, you, on the blog you will find an elaborate text update in the text form, in the written form, which has the same title as this specific video. That's the method I use. Mm -hmm. As I uh, use that blog and that, and that vlog, the uh, video blog, as a kind of rubber duck, as a kind of scientific journal, I am sharing essentially my loose thoughts and my experiences linked to social sciences, to doing science, and uh, for the last two months or, or so, my experience in re-entering the world of investment in the stock market. So today, uh, in that update on my blog, you can see like two parts. Essentially, one part is more written, another part is more uh, included in this specific video. Uh, there is the part about investment and there is the part about science, or more specifically about my research on collective intelligence. So the part about investment. Today, on April the 8th, 2020, uh, I am trying to learn uh, short-term trade. So trade within one day. Uh, I take an investment decision, usually a selling decision, uh, in the morning. I execute it and then early in the afternoon I uh, try to figure out what decisions should I take as for my investment in the stock markets to, to sort of close the day of trade. Now the context of this part. Uh, during the last two weeks, I invested heavily um, in uh, Polish biotech companies in the Polish stock market uh, as their stock price was just climbing as uh, uh, it was climbing like crazy. There was a moment yesterday in the morning uh, when I had 188% uh, of return over two weeks on that portfolio. Unfortunately, the bubble started to burst yesterday in the afternoon. Prices of those biotech companies started to fall sharply and my rate of return was becoming more and more modest. This morning uh, it uh, was cut like by half. So yesterday in the morning I had a rate of return of 188%. Today in the morning it was barely 95%. I know that barely 95% is a funny expression for whoever knows a little bit about trading in the stock market, yet in this situation it is, uh, for me, it was uh, as if a part of my dreams has suddenly evaporated. Uh, so what I decided to do uh, was to sell out three positions in my portfolio, uh, assuming that prices would fell uh, or would fall further down during the day. So I sold that stock out uh, around nine in the morning, right after the opening of the of the trading day on the Warsaw Stock Exchange. And my plan, my basic plan is to buy back into those three companies, namely Biomed Lublin, Airway Medics and Biomaxima to buy back into them, into them by the end of the day. I expect that the price will fall during the day. Uh, so as I can buy back more shares, more stock than what I sold in the morning. Uh, that's a classical scenario of day trade or daily short term trade. Uh, now, the plan B, if uh, uh, this will work if the prices will fall as I expect them to fall. Yet, it is possible uh, that the prices of those three 
uh, of those uh, three positions of those th three stocks grow during the day of today and by the early afternoon I would make a loss essentially on buying back the same shares huh? and I'm still figuring out uh, a plan B to follow the plan B would be to f to like buy further back into two other positions. One is an IT company, 11bit. It is a gaming uh, business, and another one is a biotech too. It is called Biotone. Uh, I am quite attached to this one because for for two reasons. In the past, like three years ago. Uh, I made a huge profit on trading the shares of Biotown. And secondly, among all the biotech business in Poland right now, it is the only one or one of the few ones which seems to be quite undervalued. Their market to book ratio is around uh, 0 0.73, which is very low. Uh, so I expect that they have a big potential to grow. So in that update today, once again, you can get into this update by clicking the link in the description box under the video and, uh, and you look for the update with the same title as the title of this video. So in the update, you can see like the description of my steps and the analysis of, of my steps in this strategy, at least the beginning ones. Uh, now, as uh, for the second part, the scientific part. I want to talk and to think as I am talking about uh, my research on collective intelligence. And here comes like the first big claim I want to focus a little bit on. It goes like what we do is in loop with what we claim we should do. And what we do is the stronger one of the two. Hmm? That's the connection between actual behavior and the formalized culture. Uh, pro pro probably you have observed it by yourself uh, that what we do is not the same as what we claim we should do. There is like a constantly occurring discrepancy uh, between our actions and our declared values and declared goals. I look at it not as, uh, or, or, or let's say that the common approach is that it is like a human weakness. Uh, we do something different from what we claim we should do because we are like imperfect human beings. In my view, in my take on collective intelligence, it is slightly different. I assume that this phenomenon, well known, is a manifestation of like a deep learning pattern in our civilization, a deep learning pattern in our culture. We learn by doing things and only later, sometimes later, when what we do gives some conclusive outcomes, then we formalize it as uh, ethical claims that we should do this and this. So, and this is why I claim that what we do is in loop uh, with what we claim we should do, but, the, but what we do is the stronger in that loop. So our actions are the driving force of our declarative values, not the other way around. Huh? I know that here at this point, many people could tell me, yes, but if I uh, am like really determined to follow some specific values, I can like bend my action into pursuing those values. Yes, individually we can do it, but we can do it because before in the past, the civilization as a whole has formed those, let's say those words, those claims about what we should do. So past generations of simply other or, or simply other people in the game by their behavior, and by formalizing the description of their behavior have formed like those stories we follow. And this, is, and this is only when those stories are formed that we can put them in our mind and follow them. That's the idea. 
And that's at this point one more distinction between collective intelligence and individual intelligence. In order to be individually ethically oriented, in order to have some values and some goals, we need to rely on our culture, on the stories that are being told to us through our culture. And those stories come from past collective experience, which is essentially a ethical. It is n uh, neither good nor bad. It is just a sequence of trials and uh, of trials and errors. So here comes another uh, claim that I want to stop a little bit by. Uh, you can see it in this slide, which is over, over me. Our ethical values form through our trial and error. Uh, and you have that very like meaningful image of a pigeon uh, trying to get food from a hole in the wall. And it is like visually connected with the word ethics and values. Huh? This is what I start finding out in my empirical research uh, when I use a neural network uh, to simulate like the collective goals uh, of societies. So I take a set of uh, socio-economic quantitative variables, for example, like the average number of hours worked per person per year. I, I put them through a very simple neural ne network and I keep finding a recurring pattern that essentially as a society, as a civilization, we seem to be actually pursuing values and goals which are slightly discrepant from what is commonly thought that we pursue as values and goals. Huh? So here I pass more to the results of my research. I will talk a little bit about it. For example, it is a common claim that we live in the times of a wild capitalism, over on, uh, in the times of an overconsumptive uh, capitalism. And when I do that research, according to that method, which I have just sketched, so when I put a big set of socio-economic quantitative variables, into my model, when I work them through my neural network, a very simple one, by the way, it is a very simple perceptron, a really dumb one. I keep finding out in many different contexts and in, in many different sets that the chief outcome variables that our civilization seems to be pursuing are oriented on the way that the, the, the labor market works and on the prices in export. So, for example, if through my method I compare the relative importance, uh, the relative socio-economic importance of a variable like the share of labor in the distribution of gross national income on the one hand, and the average rate of return on investment in physical assets, on the other hand, the first one, so the share of labor in the GNI, comes like way ahead of the second one in the hierarchy of importance. We seem to be a civilization essentially oriented on work rather than on the usage of capital. And uh, as I have been sending out those draft results of my research, to different journals, I have encountered that uh, uh, rebuke in the reviews that I am essentially going against a long established trend in science. It is true, maybe I am making some kind of mistake, yet um, I can find some method or some underlying logic to my findings. If we think about it, the way we work, so for example, the average number of hours worked per year per person means essentially the way we use energy and food because we burn the most energy and we consume the most of nutrients that we absorb through eating we burn it and we use it when we work, when we do actual work. So the way we work collectively is very strongly rooted in our connection with the local ecosystem. 
Here, by the way, comes that another claim of mine that I want to exploit further, that every human social structure is at its base and uh, in its beginnings an environmental project. So in order to establish any social human structure, first of all, we need to make some kind of pact with the local ecosystem so as the ecosystem doesn't kill us. Huh? It is particularly true in the context of that pandemic we had now, or we have now, huh? that uh, the confidence we have that the ecosystem will not kill us that the worst that can happen is that we kill the planet is not quite true. Huh? There are things in nature which can come out and kill us. So uh, the way we work is, or, uh, is uh, very impactful on the way we consume energy and food. And this in turn hits like the basics, the, the, the foundations of our relation with our ecosystem. Okay, these are my loose thoughts for today. You can find much more in the written update on my blog. Once again, you can go to discoversocialsciences.com. Under the video in the description box, you find the link and you will find an update with the same title as this video. So have a nice Wednesday and I hope it is somehow interesting for you. Bye.